truly in the band and talk about it because like we got to the stage where like I was having a energy drink and straight after I felt like my chest was sore. I felt this pain in my chest and I was like, man, I need to kind of I think it's the 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 karana, the energy, all that stuff like that, the sugar. So I just kind of pushed back from that and I started to feel my body just like feel a bit better, you know. I wasn't drowsy all the time, I wasn't like feeling tired too easy, like because you know you're high on sugar. You end up being a drowsy person a lot as well. You know, so I started to feel the, the difference when I started to cut down, you know. And um, I think four months ago I started going to the gym. It was good, you know. And um, for four months I haven't really been going, but now I'm telling myself, okay, it's time to be back. <laughs> I haven't been going because I'm um, just man, just really flat out. Like I get back home, I'm just tired and I've got my children to play with and stuff. So like, man, you can, I have a bit of time to go down to the gym, so I started back up, which is good. So, you know, like, for something I was um, learning um, is that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're trying to lose weight or anything like that. Like, if you keep getting wrong, it's no point of you going to the gym. So, like, when I was going to the gym, I started to feel the difference, but it was mostly because I changed my diet. You know, I stopped, I started drinking more water, I started um, cutting down and eating McDonald's. And Burger King and KFC and stuff like that. You know, because I noticed like us as a ministry, we like to furnish and we like to go eat and furnish it. You know? There's nothing wrong with that. But I was just like, man, I need to learn to kind of cut down on it. <laughs> because it's, it's not good in the eyes of God. You know? like, um, God calls us to live a healthy life. Amen? The reason why He calls us to live a healthy life is so that we can be always ready for service to God. You know, how can we be ready for service if God's like telling you to go somewhere and like, oh, I'm too lazy? I'm too tired because I had too much sugar or something like that. That's why God calls us, man. It says in um, the little, uh, second, the second letter of John, it says, the two John, it says, he writing a letter, he says, I pray that you guys be in good health. You know? And I was like, man, it's so true. Like, his prayer, his hope was for his brothers and sisters in Christ to be in good health. Amen? Cool. Okay, so we're going to have a verse, all right? Um, so, I think it was a lockdown last year in November. I shared a study on self control. I think at the start of this year, two weeks ago, I shared a study on self control. You know, and so, you'll notice that some of the study is kind of relates to the aspect of self control. And you know, that's what it is. You know. But I'm just going to be hitting on the godly side of things. Okay? Agreed. Okay, okay we're going to have the scripture. Mark chapter 7, verse 18. And he said to them, Are you so lacking in understanding also? Do you not understand that whatever goes into a man from outside cannot defile him, but it does not go into his heart, but into his stomach, and is eliminated? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he was saying, That which proceeds out of a man, that is what defiles the man. For from within, out of the heart of man, proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries. Of coveting and wickedness, as well as deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these things are evil, and they proceed from within and defile the realm. Amen? Cool. So in this verse, you see that the word there is mentioned sensuality, okay? And so what I'm trying to show you guys from this verse is that sensuality is something that comes from the heart, okay? Something that you can't control is it comes from your heart. That means that you haven't yet surrendered everything to Christ. It's something that you, that you lack in, and it could be in self control. Okay? Remember the word, what it means. Sensuality means an uncontrollable lust. Okay? Sensuality is always listed in the scriptures with laziness, greediness, and um, like things like adultery and stuff like that. Because it's things that you can't control. You know, and most of the time, you notice why these verses are linked together. It's because if you don't have self-control in your eating, it just goes to show that maybe many areas that you don't have self-control in your life. You know, you may, have, you, know, you may not have self-control of your lust. You may not have self-control of your laziness. And sometimes, if you don't have self-control of something small as eating, 
Like just like the scripture says, if you're not faithful to this, you won't be faithful to much. Yeah? So that's why it's so important, like, to get these little things right and to understand. Like, maybe that's the reason why I lack like self-control in many areas of my walk, is because I can't even control little things like my eating, or my drinking, or my sugars, or anything like that. You know, or I have a desire to buy things all the time. I want to buy shoes all the time. I want to buy clothes all the time. Something I notice is man, like the reason why some of us are broke, you know, why some of us are poor is because we're poor because we desire too much. You know? It's not because you don't earn enough, it's because you desire too much. You know? Like unless you think that and maybe it's because I'm not earning enough. <laughs> like I realize it doesn't matter how much your rate is or whatever like that, if you're spending wisely you'll be fine. But if you're wasting all your money and desiring food, desiring clothes, desiring shoes. All these different things, that's, that could be the reason why you're broke in a certain area, or that could be the reason why yeah, you don't have self control. Okay? So, sensuality, uncontrollable lust, it all starts from your heart. Okay? And that's why it's so important for all of us here to understand where's our heart today? You know, is it with the Lord or is it with what we want? Is our treasures, like, is it's not our first treasure, you know, or is the other things are on our mind every day? Yeah, because like I've been through times where I've woken up and like the first thing that comes to my mind is not even the Lord. It's like material things or something like that. Or the first thing that comes to my mind is, man, I can't wait to buy this, or I can't do this and that. And I was like, man, where's your focus? You know what I mean? Like Christ should be number one. Those things don't matter, you know, remember. Learn to have self-control, you know? <clears throat> you know, if we don't have certain things, it doesn't mean you'll die. <laughs> You know, sometimes we put it up to our level like, no, I need this because if I don't have it, I'll die. You know, I'm going to suffer or, you know, I'm not going to be cool enough. <laughs> so, all these things, don't worry about these things, you know, you know, to get these little things right, the eating, the drinking, those habits, because if we don't have those right, that's a big indicator that there's something in your life that, that doesn't have self-control either. Okay? Cool. So, can we go to Proverbs 23, verse 20 to 21? Amen. You guys got it? Proverbs 23, verse 20 to 21. Amen. Amen. Cool. So it says, Do not be with heavy drinkers of wine, or of gluttonous eaters of meat. For the heavy drinker of the garden will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe one with grace. Amen. That's cool, right? So it shows that gluttony will bring us to, to poverty and drowsiness. What is that? What do you get drowsiness from? It's usually related to laziness. You know, like being tired and stuff like that. But it's because we eat it too much sometimes, you know. Um, like I've mentioned before. And it says as well, I'm glad you will come to poverty. Meaning that if you have an uncontrollable lust over something, you will always end up being poor afterwards, you know. And like, that's why we have to be careful because we all have bills to pay, we all have children to feed, we all have ourselves to feed. But we can't do these things to the maximum potential that we should if we're always desiring things, you know, if we're always running after things and don't matter. And um, just off the word but you know, I said that it's excessive eating. When I say excessive eating, it's meaning that you eat and you get full, but you feel like you need to eat more, you know. Or you, you, you have your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, but then, I don't know, you have a normal plate, a normal plate, but then you need to top that up with some more plates, or you need to top that up with extras, you know. And this is where you have to learn, like, you just have enough to make you full, you know? Because you're going to keep filling yourself up and you're going to explode. <laughs> just, keep, just keep eating, like, you know, you have to just learn to limit your eating, okay? Learn to limit your eating, just baby steps, okay? Like, um, I remember one time, uh, I shared, uh, give me. So it was kind of like, um, I said to him, okay, I'll give you a week just to go water only. And he said, no. Yeah. So he did a week. It was good. You know, um, something gave me sense to me because I said to him, like, you know, I guess this is part of you learning self control. And he said, yeah, man, I think I can do it, but I need someone to keep me accountable. You know, some of us need that accountability when it comes to eating or to drinking and stuff like that. And that's why we have everyone here. You know, we keep each other accountable more for us or more flying or hiding things. Oh, we can keep each other accountable of the way we're eating as well, right? Yeah, so when we're eating together, I just want to hit it. It's a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you come out. <laughs> That's a big 
experience with that because that's all we do that. Um, well, press one. Can we get some other verse? Can we get the Proverbs 13, verse 25? You know, it doesn't just have to be with food. If you guys go to the shops together or something like that, they, they, they want to buy excessive things. Well, hey, do you need that? You know, or is this becoming... How much have you focused on this today? <laughs> how long have you been thinking about buying this? Just like, for a moment. Just, it's not bad, but it's just in case they've lost focus on things like that. Okay? Proverbs 13, verse 25. Amen, if you guys have a couple of us. Amen. Okay, it says, the righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite, but the stomach of the wicked the righteous people will be the best that are right on the side of God. They always have enough to satisfy their appetite. Okay? But that, uh, sorry, it says, but the stomach of the wicked is in need. Okay? So, remember, the book of the Bible, Jesus gives us enough. You know, our, our cup overflows with the Lord. We always have a lot. And we always have abundance in the Lord. You know? And He always provides for us food and everything like that. In Ecclesiastes, it talks about how God tells us to enjoy our food. You know, enjoy your food, enjoy your drink, enjoy your company with one another. But it never says to do it excessively, you know, to lose control of these things. We can enjoy everything out there, you know what I mean? Like, um, what's it called? It's like it says in Corinthians, you know, everything is, um, is lawful, but we won't let these things become a master over us, okay? We won't allow things to master our lives. That's where we have to learn to draw the line. Okay? And so in the scripture, the righteous has enough to satisfy his appetite, but the stomach of the wicked is needed. Okay, so that means we have to understand that we always have enough. It is possible to say no to certain things, and it's just a matter of your heart. You know, if your heart is full of love, it will be easy for you to say no. Okay? And um, cool. We'll go to the next verse, okay? Here we go to Proverbs 25. Verse 16. Is this all making sense today? Amen? Yeah. Proverbs 25, verse 16. Amen. Amen? You guys got it? Amen. Let's read. It says, Have you found money? Eat only what you need. That you have, or that you not have that of excess and vomit. Amen? So this verse shows us that when we ever eat, uh, or we have more than what we need, we can even end up being sick, or we can even end up vomiting it out. Okay? That's why the scripture says, if you found honey, eat only what you need. Okay? If you find something, or you get blessed for something, or anything like that, just have what you need. Okay? You don't need all of it. Right? Like, um, <coughs> what's it called? Like I said, for example, if you you know, if, if you have money you know, and you see that, oh, I don't need this money. Or someone in the church may need it, you know. You don't need that money, so why don't bless it to someone? You know, ask the Lord to give it to someone. Or if you have food, like sometimes when I get extra food, I just see who is in my house. You know, oh, here, take this food with you. you know? Take this cake or take whatever, or take this plate of beer or something. <laughs> take it with you because I don't need it, you know what I mean? Otherwise, you're just going to keep eating, eating, and then you're gonna, you may get sick, or you're going to just keep eating to the point where you vomit. So, that's another scripture to show us that uh, just stick to what you need. Amen? Amen. Cool. We don't need plenty of things. If we've got plenty, just give it up. Okay? Go okay, to Titus chapter 1, verse 12 to 13. Amen? Have you guys got it? Okay, it says, One of themselves, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy bones. This testimony is true. For this reason, we reproof them severely, so that they may be sound in the faith. Okay? So, Paul here is talking inside us, and um, there was an accusation against the Cretans. Okay, so the Cretans. I'm not sure exactly who they are, but I know they're from a place called Crete, and I believe that they most likely were Christians. Okay? And this prophet of their own brought it up and he said, Man, these guys, they 
always lies, the evil beast, and let him love. And Paul saying, but this testimony is true. So therefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be silent and faithful. Okay? So, this is an example to show that even Paul brought it up and he goes, man, like, if you're a liar, or if you're an evil beast, or if you're a lazy partner, they should be reduced, you know, or they should be corrected, you know. And um, this is, if, if this is any of us today, I just pray that this may correct us, or point us in the right direction, or give us some wisdom or understanding that it's time to come out of gluttony, amen? It's time to come out of laziness and stuff like that. So remember, like, like I said earlier, if you guys feel like you guys are lazy in your walk, or you're lazy to eat, or anything like that, it may be because of your diet. You know, it's, uh, maybe it's just something as simple as that. You know? And um, when we get these little things right, it can change a lot of things in our world. Okay? So just to show, there's other verses as well, where Paul talks about sensuality. You know? um, it's removed by force under the category of uncontrollable lust. So Paul, re Paul rebukes that stuff, and he doesn't like that stuff being in the church. So therefore, the church should be in self-control. We should learn that, like, no, our limits, right? Amen? Amen. Okay. <clears throat> okay, cool. Can we go to Romans 13, verse 11 to 14? Amen? 
They said, if I realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. For men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, personal, arrogant, violent, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, every possible, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, treacherous, reckless, concealed, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, pointing to the form of godliness, although they have denied its power, and what such men as these. Amen. Alright, so this verse shows us that in the last days there will be men that rise up that don't have self-control. You know, all these these lists of people, these types of people that walk in these certain things, you know, I'm not saying you know all these things but what I'm saying is that, you know, you don't have to be part of that. Because, okay? You know, it's a choice whether you want to use this list or not. But what I'm saying is, is in the general sense that there will be a time in these last days that there will be people with no self-control. You know, you see this world today, like, you see the hard perfect in this world, who wants more lovers of self than lovers of God? It says here that they may become lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. You know, people don't care about God these days. They, they, they rather just be like, you know, I'm going to go fornicate. You know, I'm going to go do this, I'm going to go do that. Because I know the truth, but I'm a lover of my pleasure before I'm a lover of God. Okay? Then let's not fall into that, amen? Okay? Let's not fall into these things where we just start to love things and love the pleasure or love the buzz or something that we just forget about God, you know. And then food can be one of them as well. You know, food or material things. Remember, I didn't love, I didn't love these things before the Lord. Amen? Okay, can we go to 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25 to 27? Amen? You guys got it? Okay, it says, Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control and all things. So back in those times there was games, there was, um, there was things that happened in Rome. The Colosseums, they had things like that. This is where I knew Paul was talking about his own analogy. So everyone who competes in the games, you know that Olympics is like so cool. Like all the way back to like, like, like wearing like a millennium there, all it's so cool. Okay, so you see, even from back then, they knew that people would practice self-control in sports and stuff like that. So Paul said, so everybody who competes in the game, games exercise self-control in all things. They, they come to receive a perishable crowd, a reef, for we are imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim. I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it must fail. So that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified. Amen? You understand? So, he's comparing it to our walk. So, everything in our walk, you know, everything that we do, we're running to receive an imperishable crown. Okay? And so, because we're doing this, like, how do we do this is we have to be disciplined. Okay? It's all about discipline in our walks. We're not meant to be, like, ill disciplined. You know, like, ill discipline is when it's like, you know the truth and you still don't want to know that. Or when someone keeps you accountable, or someone rebukes you, you still don't want to listen. You know, that's ill discipline in your walk. Or, um, you know, the harm and the danger that can happen if you walk down this path and you still call it anyways. That's an ill discipline Christian. Okay? And for us as saints, if we're running for that imperishable crown, we have to do it with discipline. Okay? Meaning that we put our bodies in control. Alright? Remember, we have the Holy Spirit now. The Holy Spirit's job is to empower us to obey God, right? And if we're not listening to the Holy Spirit, then you're obeying yourself. You know, the flesh is not influenced by God, meaning the flesh will always go against the Spirit of God and what the Spirit of God wants for us. Amen? Cool. We're going to run the verse to Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 to 19. Uh, I'm nearly done. I'm not there. I'm, I'm nearly finished this time. Okay? Just wanted to keep it simple and plain for all of us to understand uh, what God is. And you know, it's a sin that we shouldn't be doing. Okay? 
that gun and whose glory is in this shame. Be reminded of those things. Amen? I remember um, me and Tama, Pastor Tama, like this few years ago, we were fellowshipping on this verse. And he was like, man, Paul, I had to rebuke some people. And I was like, why? He's like, well, because, you know, fellowship started to turn into a hangout over here in Sydney. I was like, oh, okay. He said, yeah, like, instead of people wanting to go out and do a little bar, they wanted to go somewhere and eat. You know, they never wanted to pray. You know, before, oh, where are you going to take me today? You know? And they would travel far distances so that they can do it. And I said, what did you say to them? Because I told them that they, their God is their belly. It's like, why? Because they, they run after their desires. They want to feed their belly. You know? They don't want to listen to God first. In the scripture in James, it says about, um, it says, let's do somewhere and start a business and, and move over there and everything like that. And then James says, no, do not know that your life is a big one. Yeah. Everything that you do, it should be if the Lord wills. Amen? If the Lord wills it to happen, then go for it. But if not, man, you've got some other jobs to do for God. Okay? And we're not meant to be servants of our belly, running after our pleasures, our desires, or servants of God. Amen? Okay? You have to understand this. And when I was watching the Messiah, I was like, man, it's, it's, it's a good way to put it. You know, because it's so true. It's all throughout the scriptures. There's people that run after their bellies. You know, they, they rather worship their bellies rather than worshiping God. Okay? They rather run after the nicest food, the like best, whatever, so that they can satisfy themselves and their own. But, like I said, you can enjoy a good food. There's nothing wrong with it. Like, and, oh man, I can't get it. He says in Timothy that all meat is sanctified, that it's blessed, it's for us to enjoy. Okay, so, but it's understanding like if you have something that's more important to do, you know, or if you have things that you couldn't do because you haven't done in a long time, you haven't gone out of problem, you haven't actually fellowship, you've missed out on fellowship or something like that, and you would rather go and do that, then you need to check your heart. Okay, like you, you should run, you should in your heart to do something that I'd rather go and do. Just have toast and just go and fellowship with someone and build up my relationship with God. Let us not serve our pleasures, but let's serve God. Okay. Here we go to uh, Ephesians 4, verse 17 to 19. This is my uh, second to last. Amen? You guys got it? Okay, so, so this I say, and affirm together with the Lord, that you walk no longer just as the Gentiles as you walk in the futility of their mind, being dark, darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of their ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over to sexuality for the practice of every kind of impurity. Amen. So, this is Paul here talking to the Ephesians. Let us not walk as the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, walking in the, the imagination and the pollution of their minds, because we're not meant to be like that anymore. We're the mind of Christ. Okay? So, it says in verse 18, they're being darkened in their understanding. Okay? They have, they're ignorant because they have hardened hearts. You know, it says, and they have become callous, meaning hardened. They turn themselves over to sexuality. Okay? So you have to check, like, if we are doing these things and in our mind we're like, nah, it's all good. You may have a hardened heart. Okay? You may have a hardened heart. And you may be walking in the fraternity of your mind just like Gentiles do. Okay? And we're meant to be renewed in our mind, understanding that these things, like, it's actually serious before the eyes of God. Okay? And like, if we don't get these little things right, it could be the reason why there's struggles in many areas of our walks. Okay? So God is, is actually really serious in the Bible, alright? And, um, yeah, so it's important that we just be careful of what we're doing with ourselves, if we're, if we're walking according to the Word of God, or we're running after our desires, or, you know, whatever it may be. You know, let us be good help, amen? Can we get another verse? Can we get a verse? 
chapter 4, uh, verse 8. Amen? Amen. It says, for bodily exercise, or for exercise, or for, sorry, for bodily discipline, or for exercise, is only of local profit. But bodily is profitable for all things. Since it holds promise for the present life, but also for the life to come. Amen? So, uh, this is cool. Like, um, I was fellowshipping, awesome. Not fellowship. I was talking with a guy from work, uh, one of our staff, last week, and he's like African, and he's a bodyguard, a personal trainer. And we're just talking, and he goes, and I said, so, hey, um, just out of interest, like, uh, what would you say a person they need to do if he wants to lose weight and stuff like that? And he said, man, um, just to eat more lighter foods you know, and, and to control what he's eating. Because he goes, yeah, I see a lot of people go to the gym, but there's no results because they don't eat right. You know? And he goes, you, you can't, um, if you're eating bad food and going to the gym, you're going to the gym to burn the bad food off before you get the results. Okay? So you want to go so it's like you're, you, you have nothing to burn but what to gain. Does it make sense? You have nothing to burn but to, but rather to actually help the body. Okay? And that was back then when I used to study um, sports science. That's a lesson for today. But yes, a lot of things just doesn't look very important. I already kind of knew that, but I wanted to hear his perspective, like and the way he broke it down, like his terms. And it's so true, you know. And I see some guys in the ministry, they exercise and they train, it's good. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. But I share the scripture to, to remember to never lose focus in your walk. You know, if this is, your walk is more important than your training. You know, but understanding that the training is still useful as well. You know? um, I'll share about Maki. Maki said that when she started exercising, it actually helped her a lot in her walk. You know? Like helped her kind of just discipline herself and stuff like that, which is good. You know? But remember, for all of us, you know, we never lose focus on whatever is more important. You know? I'll never choose the gym over fellowship. You know? I'll never choose the exercise over prayer. I never choose that kind of stuff in like the things of God. Those are things that you just do in your spare time that can help you discipline yourself, you know, help you kind of get more healthy, okay? And so that's my study for today. You know, that's my um, encouragement for you guys. Just to understand, like, God is a serious thing, but today, if you want to have self control, you know, self control is part of the fruit of the Spirit. So if you want to have self control, what you've got to do is be the Spirit. What you've got to do is get into the presence of God and deny yourself, repent and say, Lord, I can't do it on my own, I need you. Know? If you feel like, oh man, I, I, I keep going back and forth, it's because you need to get in the Spirit of God. You, know? you need to learn to discipline yourself. It's, it's not you that, like you can't do it on your own, you need the Lord. Amen? You know? And this is just for us to understand the seriousness of, of this sin and to understand, like, man, it is possible to get out of it. It is possible to renew our minds, you know. It is possible to, to come out of things. Because, you know, um, like I said before, like, uh, I'll share uh, with some of you guys about, about demons before, you know. How demons can sometimes, um, they follow each other. And they go usually in gangs, okay. You know, like the scripture that says, uh, if, you, if they come and they find the house, they go and they take seven more of them and then the state of the person becomes worse than the first, than the last time. You know, so what I understand is that demons can go together and they follow one after one another. So for example, if it's a demon of uh, if it's a demon of murder, you know, the things that come before murder is anger and then violence and then you get rid of, you know what I mean? So with gluttony, you know, I believe that that can be a trail as well. You know, with gluttony, it leads to things like insecurities, it leads to laziness, you know, it leads to drowsiness. It's because we glut, you know what I mean? So there's certain things that follow certain sin. But this is what we have to be careful of, amen? So, praise the Lord, that's my study today. God is good? A lot of time. Praise the Lord, family. Just a couple of times, please stand up. We just have a time for God. Okay? Just remember, you know, if you don't need it, then forfeit it. Don't eat it, let it go. Alright? Okay, can we just pray? Okay, can I just close your eyes? You find in Jesus' name, you come before you, Lord. I just pray, Father, uh, just for the saints here, Lord Jesus. I just pray, Father, if there's anything in our hearts that
that, uh, that, that we may not be able to control. If there's any sensuality, you know, if there's anything that it's in our hearts that, that is making us lack in our walks, Lord, I just pray that uh, you deliver us from these things. You help us, Lord Jesus, through your Holy Spirit, just to have, have self-control, just to be disciplined in our walks. Lord, we understand that your word says he is faithful in the least, and be faithful in the much. Help us to be faithful in these little things, Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus, that we may learn to identify the things that make us feel insecure, or make us feel lazy, or make us feel drowsy, and help us to, to cut it off, Lord Jesus. Pull it from the root, not just trimming the branches, Lord Jesus. Help us to not have confidence in the flesh, or worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Lord. I just pray, Father, that um, you help us, Lord Jesus. Like, I thank you, Lord, just for the food and the drinks and everything that you've put in this earth for us to enjoy. Uh, so Jesus, To not go overboard or to have an excess for Jesus. If we have too much money or we have too much material things, help us to be content and not be greedy. Help us to have a heart of giving, Lord Jesus, because you say in the word that you love a cheerful giver. Lord, I just pray that um, you just be with us, Lord, and I just pray that you continue to mold us day in and day out. Help us to be ready and in our season, Lord. I just pray, Father, that um, you help our focus just to be on the things that are above. That we may treasure the rewards, the heavenly rewards that you have for us, and not treasure the things that they get dusty and get moth, Lord Jesus. I just pray, Father, that um, you continue to build this church up, to not, to not forsake the Word of God and what you have to say for us, Lord Jesus. To not forsake the basic principles of what you've told us to do, but to grab everything that you've told us, Lord, and just to hold on to it. Help us to, <coughs> to continue to live. In the, in the things that you've taught us, the first works, Lord Jesus. If we've left our first love because of these distractions, help us to return to the first works in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I just pray that uh, you, speak, you, you speak to our hearts today as we worship you with music, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That was good.